Welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly and in this video I'm going to show you that how you can pass in information to the model from a parent view or more of a content view. So right now if I go ahead and run the application I can click on any of these animals and I can see the animals inside the text view. But what about if you wanted to display more information which doesn't really fit in a text view? More probably you want to create a new view. So let's go ahead and create a brand new view. I'm going to go ahead and add a new file and uh, not Swift file. Let's go actually back. Let's say cancel and search for Swift UI file so that we have some sort of a default code already added. And now I can actually go over here and say animal detail view and let's go ahead and say create. Great. So this is our animal detail view. Now, what do you want to display in the animal detail view? I obviously want to display the actual image of the animal that you selected, which can be displayed using a text because it's an emoji. So we can actually go ahead and create a vertical stack and just put that particular text view, not sure why it's inside that vertical stack. The other thing that we want to do, we want to show in our detail view is another text view which will show the animal selected. So right now if I go over here and remove this I can actually add a default animal view. So let's go ahead and add some sort of an emoji of an animal. A cat is fine. Okay. And let's go ahead and change the font so that we can actually see a little bit more larger font because this is a detail view so hopefully we'll be able to see a little bit more detail meaning a little bit bigger size for that particular animal, a cat, that's fine. And we can actually go ahead and add another text view, which is simply going to say cat in this case. Fine, that's per perfect. So this is our animal detail view. Now, if I go back over here into the content view, there we go. Now, right now, if you click or select any of the items from the list, it's basically displaying a text view. So you want to replace this text view and you want to replace it with the animal detail view. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to replace all of this text view and I'm just going to say animal detail view, the one the view that we just created. All right. And it's going to take a little bit of time to refresh this preview. Here we go. And now we can actually go ahead and press the play button to see that if we can even display a hard coded version, a default version of the animal detail view or not. Once we have achieved displaying the animal detail view, then we can move forward in passing in the selected animal. All right. So always take really small steps. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to select this mouse and I can actually go and see this cat because that's the hard coded version. So I can click on any of these things and it will show me the same thing. That's great. It's working, but we still need to pass in the selected animal. Now the selected animal is right over here, which is the actual image of the animal. And this is the one that we can actually pass in. Right now on this custom view, you don't even see the actual name of the animal. So if you want, you can also add some sort of a name to the animal. I'm just going to say animal one, two and three and so on so that we can even pass that if you want to. Now I don't have any variable where I can hold the name of the animal. So maybe I can go over here. I can say selected animal or and then another private property, which was going to be a selected animal name, which is going to be something like this. All right. So selected animal will be the animal picture. Selected animal name will be the name of the animal. And now I can go over here and say self dot selected animal name equals to self dot. Well, in this case, it's just going to be the index. So I can simply say animals and then whatever the index is. Now, obviously, in your actual application, you should be using classes or structure or models, but not like this. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and first build our application so that we know that it is compiling and building correctly or not. And now we can actually go ahead and pass information to the animal detail view. 
The problem with the, this approach is that we don't have any property that is waiting to be populated. So for this to work, we need to go ahead and create a property which can be called, let's say, animal name, which can be a string property. And we can have another property, which is the animal emoji or animal picture, whatever you want to call it. That's perfectly fine. All right. Now, these values have to be passed from whoever is trying to use animal detail view. And the first thing you will notice is that the Xcode previews, which is the animal detail view underscore preview, is actually using that particular constructor. So we need to pass in those two names, animal name, which in this case can be cat, and the second one can be animal picture, which is simply an emoji, so we can actually pass in any animal we want, which now has disappeared. Uh, let's go ahead and pass in the rhino. Okay, great. Now we can go back to the content view and obviously we need to replace this. So I'm going to say over here animal name, which is self dot selected animal name and animal picture, which is self dot selected animal. Let's go ahead and build application again. Resume it. And play it. So now hopefully we'll be able to pass in the animal, the selected name and the selected picture to the animal detail view and we should be able to display it. We haven't really updated the animal detail view, so our mistake. Let's go over here and update that. And this is going to be self dot animal picture, which will present the animal picture. And instead of cat, this will be self dot animal name, which is this one. All right, now we can go ahead and uh, run our application. So I'm going to go back to the content view and press the play button. And now whenever I select an animal, I can actually pass in that animal information to the second screen, to the model, where it actually gets displayed. Great, right? So this is easy if you want to pass in information from a parent view, which in this case is a content view, to a child model, which in this case is the animal detail view. In the next of videos, I'm going to show you that how you can pass in a reverse order, meaning maybe in the model you type something, the name of the animal, you maybe corrected it or you typed in the correct name of the animal or some comments about the animal or the location of the animal. And from the model, you have to pass that information to the content view. So how can you do that? We're going to cover that in the next videos, in the future videos. So stay tuned for that. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to go to Udemy and check out my course, Surf UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is a complete course of Surf UI development. As you can see, it's six hours plus course and I am keep adding new content and updating it also to the latest versions of Xcode 11. You can see it not only covers the building list, navigation, grid, state binding, and all that stuff, but also MVVM design pattern by using and creating a complete news application which integrates with a web API. It also covers gestures, property wrappers, forms, and actually the new section that I have just added also cover models and also passing information from the master or the parent to the model using the MVVM design pattern using the view models. So this is your one-stop shop for a amazing course on Swift UI development. Now here's the thing, there are links right in the description of this video. So click on the link and you will get the best discount. All the links of my courses are also available in the description of the video. So if you like some other, you want to learn maybe augmented reality or MVVM design or even blockchain or machine learning, then the links are already there. So please use those links. You will get the best deal. And to be really honest, if you use my links, then I get to keep a little bit of a higher margin or revenue from those courses. But for you, the course is only $9.99, basically $10. So if you use the link, it will really, really be appreciated. Thank you so much. And if you have any comments, uh, don't hesitate to ask me any questions and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thank you so much.